and she was saved. I'm looking at a man out here. I'm not going to recognize him because it would embarrass him, but I know for a fact he's led three or four people to Jesus in the last few weeks just by having simple conversations. He's sitting in here today. You can do it. We can do it. A simple conversation with the Lord about the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see this wealthy woman, Lydia, as she opens her heart to Jesus? Can you see her as she lays aside those royal purple garments and dresses in white linen as she is baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and her household follows her? She's so excited now that she opens up her home for Bible study to lead other people to Jesus. You see, some are won by conversation. Students, listen to me. This week, God's going to put you in a situation with somebody who's crying out for Jesus, and you can have a simple conversation with them and give them Jesus, the greatest gift you can give. Ladies and gentlemen, on your job, somewhere this week, you will have an opportunity to have a simple conversation with a colleague or a family member and just very simply tell them what Jesus Christ has done for you. That's all you have to do. A simple conversation with this businesswoman. And she gave her life to Jesus. I believe I'll see Lydia in heaven. Not just in those royal purple robes. Oh no. I think she's laid that royal purple aside. And now she wears the white linen of the blood wash. The redeemed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll see her one day in glory. Because Paul thought enough of the Lord Jesus to have a simple conversation with her down by the riverbank. Folks, can you imagine what would happen here if we really got serious about telling people about Jesus? I mean, with hundreds of people in this auditorium this morning, if all of us would just share Jesus with the people that we know, we could impact literally thousands of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why don't we do it? Are we afraid? Has the devil scared us away? Who can you tell this week about Jesus Christ in a simple conversation? If you're hearing me, say amen. I want to show you something else. Look at verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination meant us. This is a sad confrontation. There is... A sad confrontation about to take place here. This little slave girl was possessed with the spirit of Python, which in Greek mythology, there was a, a python snake in the temple of Apollo that could give the future. And so she was demon-possessed and had this psychic ability that the devil had given her to tell the future. By the way, you should never have anything to do with these fortune tellers. Scripture says don't mess with that. That comes straight out of hell. And it's something that you should not dabble with or play with. I'm not even going to read a horoscope in the newspaper because when you do that, you're just opening the door for demonic activity and the spirit of oppression to walk right into your life. Stay away from it. And here's this little slave girl. And she is possessed by these demons. So she starts following Paul around, making an announcement. Look at verse 17. And you see that what she says in that verse is basically true, but Paul refuses her endorsement. Listen, saints, we don't need the endorsement of this world to tell the world about Jesus Christ. I don't want some Hollywood actor with, a moral like, with morals like alley cats getting up and saying something about Jesus and then just living for the devil. That's not what we need. All we need to do as believers is just to lift Jesus Christ up the way He is in His fullness and His glory and His Holy Spirit will draw people to Him. Just tell people about Jesus. This sad confrontation. That day something happened. Look at verse 18. Paul confronted her and he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And at that moment, the demons of hell came out of that woman, left her. 
You see what you have here? There's a confrontation. You've got Jesus and the devil in a head-on collision. And any time you have Jesus and the devil in a head-on collision, Jesus is going to win every time. So you don't have to be afraid to tell people about Jesus. You're going in the power of his name. You're going in the power of his blood. A sad confrontation. Verse 19, look at what happened. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. You see, when this little slave girl got saved, it hit their pocketbook. She couldn't tell the future anymore because she knew then that the future belongs to Jesus. And now that she couldn't tell the future... She couldn't make them any money. And they got mad because they were more concerned about their money than they were about her soul. Listen. What is the value of a soul? What does it profit a man, Scripture says, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? We ought to be investing every penny we have in winning people to Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That's what happened here. And they put these men in jail, and that leads to the third and final thing, a serious complication. A serious complication. Look down at verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, let me show you a couple of things. Think about this jailer. I mean, a jailer is not the kind of guy that you usually think you're going to go and talk to Jesus about. I mean, a, a jailer is a pretty tough dude. And we got, we've got an idea that these tough people won't listen to us when we talk to them about Jesus. But, but look at what happened here. The opposite is true. This jailer represents a lot of people who will not hear about Jesus until they get in a serious complication. You let somebody who laughs at Jesus and mocks the church and makes fun of believers, you let that person get in a serious complication. You let his little baby get sick. You let his wife walk out on him. You let him lose his job. You let him experience a financial crisis. You let him come down with a terminal illness. He is ready to listen to you tell him about Jesus. A serious complication. When I do revivals, I asked the pastor of the church where I'm doing a revival at who the meanest man in town is because I want to go and talk to the meanest man in town. And when he tells me who it is, I'll say, let's go see him. You know why? If the meanest man in town receives Jesus, the church is going to have revival. I mean, you get the honorest one out there, the meanest one out there, giving his heart to Jesus. Who knows more lost people than anybody else? The lost Lost people know lost people. You get the meanest sinner in town saved, he's going to know all the sinners in town. And there'll be a revival. And maybe some church people will get fired up. Amen? I'm trying to help you, but you're not helping me much today. <clears throat> Look at verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. You see, they put them in the back of the prison. It says in the inner stocks. That means in maximum security. They put them in maximum security, chains on their feet. And at midnight, verse 25, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. I can almost hear them singing. Can you? If you listen, you can hear them singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. 